Hey everyone and welcome back. I have made this list of the top 5 vehicles everyone should purchase and own in 2019. Along with that, I also have got 3 bonus vehicles to add to the list which will help and benefit you all. So let's get started. Now, the 5th vehicle on the list is the B11 Strike Force. It is priced at $3,800,000, but if you are watching this video in the week I made it, then there's a discount on the aircraft and it's available for just a shade less than $3 million at $2,850,000. That's $1 million in discount. This is the latest plane that was added to the GTA Online and I'm not telling you to buy because it is the fastest, but because of the variety of advantages you get with this plane. The gun on this plane shoots out explosive bullets just like the one on the Hydra and the Laser. Along with this you get lock-on missiles and the barrage missiles, which is the first on the fighter jets. On others you would just get the continuous lock-on missiles. To add to this you also get the bomb bay which can be used for dropping bombs. The main reason for this vehicle is how it flies, handles and can take damage. This plane can take more damage and hand shots from the explosive bullets compared to Hydra or the Laser. This plane has the best flying capability with its maneuverability making it easier to turn suddenly either to avoid bullets or dodge missiles. And also it helps while landing in tight spots which will be greatly helpful. So if you are looking for the one jet that is the best in class then wait no more and get the B11 Strike Force. At number 4 we have the Akula. I wanted to add one all round best helicopter and I choose the Akula. What makes this helicopter the best in game is the stealth option. You can go completely off the radar at a press of a button. Nobody can see you unless they actually see you directly or from the orbital cannon screen. You can use this ability in many ways like doing great businesses or for selling the MC products with the bag mission. Or even if you just want to travel from point A to point B undetected and off the radar. The heli comes with machine gun upgrades, homing missiles and barrage as options. The machine guns aren't much useful but, but with the missiles upgrade, I would suggest you get the homing missiles option. The barrage is not really a useful option when compared to the homing ones. The best part about this helicopter apart from the, all the bow is that it can carry 4 people unlike the hunter. The hunter loses out on the stealth ability and the seating capacity which makes the Akula the best overall in the helicopter segment. Up next in the third place is the Gargoyle Death Bike. I wanted to add this vehicle in this list mainly because it's not only the best for the arena wars but also because it's good and useful for free roam too. I have made in-depth videos showing why this bike is the number one must-have vehicle for those who are very much into these arena ward modes and want to have high success rates. I have also shown the best methods to win all the times too, so do check them out for which I'll be linking at the top in the end as well as down below in the description. Now for the brief overview, the gargoyle bike costs $120,000, but you get a trade price of $90,000 if you unlock it in the arena war modes. And it also cost $1,270,000 to upgrade it to an Arena Wars variant. Of all the vehicles available for the Arena, the Death Bike is overall the best one. The success rate for this vehicle in winning these modes is just never ending. I myself have won 95% of the games I have played with this vehicle. Leaving the Arena Wars modes apart, this bike also scores good in freedom. This is presently the fastest bike in game beating both variants of the oppressor. The main advantage is the boost which can be spam used to give a push to its speed. The bike with boost and the armor plating in the back is the best to get away from NPCs shooting at you. Another thing is that you can use your personal drive-by weapons other than the dual miniguns you get as standard on the bike. If you travel a lot on the ground and prefer two wheelers for the agility, handling and maneuverability, then you should undoubtedly get this bike as it's overall the best one. Now before we move on to the top two vehicles on this list, I would like to make three special mentions here. First of them is the Avenger which is priced at $3,450,000. But one thing is that you need to own a facility in order to store the Avenger. You cannot store it in the hangar like other aircrafts. But there's an advantage owning this and there's actually no need to purchase the normal MOC if you buy this. The Avenger is one of the fastest aircrafts in the game and can withstand a lot of damage. 
Just like the MOC, the Avenger can take a lot of explosions or even bullets before breaking down. And as this is one of the fastest, you can use it to travel across the map very fast. To top it off, you don't need to worry about insurance or losing money when it gets destroyed as it doesn't cost anything just like the MOC or the Terrorbite. Second in the special mentions is the Armored Kuruma. Even today, if you ask any good old players which is the best overall car on budget for the beginner players is, then the answer definitely would be the Armored Kuruma. This car is fast, can seat 4, has great handling, is armored and has the best bulletproof glass amongst any cars in this game. The main advantage of this car is its bulletproof glass, which helps protecting you or the occupants immensely during heists, missions, jobs or even free roam work from bullets. There is no other vehicle in game with such good capability. But the one disadvantage of this car is that it cannot withstand any explosions. One grenade or rocket or bomb is enough to take it out. An alternative for this is the insurgent, which can take explosions. But the disadvantage of that is it doesn't have bulletproof glass like the armored Kuruma. And this was available for free as a gift during the Christmas and New Year event week. Hope you all got yours. The Kuruma is priced at $698,000, but you can get it for a trade price of $525,000 if you complete the first setup mission from the first haste. I use this car even today during such hastes or jobs and it plays a good role. As you can see from the video, it takes a lot of damage and just about one or two bullets of all hundreds of bullets hit me. The last one in the special mentions is the Buzzard Attack Chopper. This helicopter is priced at $1,750,000. This also was available for free on the 28th during the Christmas and New Year event week. Why I added this is because of its agility and handling. It's very nimble and lightweight making it easy to take off fast or make sharp turns to dodge missiles. This heli is like a CEO or grinder's best vehicle. It's the fast choice to travel from A to B for transporting goods and such. Another point is that it's smaller and compact compared to other helicopters, which means you can land and take off from tight spots. Along with this, you can call or spawn this helicopter right next to you anywhere on the map if you are a VIP or CEO, making it very helpful. So if you grind a lot and want the best helicopter, then you should consider getting this. Back to the second must own vehicle on this list. It is the Oppressor Mark II. Now before you get angry or pissed off, I want you to listen to me on this. I know most of you all hate this because of all the tryhards and kids flying around killing you and destroying your cars or products, but it also serves a very good purpose which I'll get to in a short while. Firstly, the Oppressor Mark II is priced at $3,890,000, but you can get it for a trade price of $2,950,000 by completing 5 client missions. Once purchased, you can store it in normal garages just like the old oppressor or if you have the terabyte, you can store it in it. Although if you want to customize it, you need to have the specialized workshop in the terabyte for all the upgrade works. The oppressor comes standard with 2 machine guns in the front and you can upgrade it to either the explosive cannons or the missiles in the back of the terabyte. I have made an in-depth video on this particular vehicle explaining everything briefly in it. I'll be linking at the top as well as the end, so do check it out. The main reason I like this vehicle is because of how it can ride, hover or fly anywhere. You can ride it on the ground or on top of the water bodies where it hovers in both the scenarios. And also you can fly with it. To top it off, you also get a boost function. This has been one of my favorite vehicles in the game after the first oppressor and I use it all the time. The fact that I can take out stationary or moving targets precisely with its ruiner-like missiles and swoop down and collect packages or crates even from the tightest spots which are hard for the helicopters makes it one of the top most useful vehicles. To top this all, you can instantly call this vehicle right next to you if you are registered as an MC as this is considered as a motorbike even though it has no wheels. Apart from this, you can call it through the interaction menu, the same as the terabyte menu, or through the normal way of mechanic. The even more best part of this is the ability you get to travel from one place to another being AFK. I'll be making a separate detailed video on this, so stay tuned by subscribing. So for the conclusion of this, if you want a vehicle which is fast, can fly, can go on water, has good weapons and such, 
then wait no more and get the Oppressor Mark II. It is one of the best vehicles I have bought till date. Now coming to the first vehicle on the list of must own vehicles is the Terabyte. It costs $1,375,000 and comes close to $3 million if you choose to upgrade it fully. But that's just one thing. If you want to own this, then you need to have bought the nightclub already as the Terabyte is stored in the nightclub garage. The Terabyte is like the ultimate dream vehicle for grinders or even those who want to make online life a bit easier. This vehicle is a serious money minting machine. How? Well, it allows you to run all the other businesses from it. Be it Bunker, Hangar, CEO or MC. All of them are available in the Terabyte. You can source crates as well as vehicles if you are a CEO and own the crates warehouse as well as the vehicle warehouse from anywhere on the map. This is the main plus point I liked about this. I hated how earlier I had to travel all the way across the map if I was elsewhere and wait through all the loading screens, go through the office, start it up and then again follow the same long steps. This was irritating and very time consuming. Also with the bunker and the MC businesses, you can start the resupply missions in the terabyte from anywhere on the map without having to go to the businesses or bunker itself to start them up. Although I suggest you all to buy the supplies, the option to steal them is still there. You can also source the hangar crates but I do not recommend doing them. Firstly, because the business itself is trash and not worth wasting your time on it. And secondly, few missions require you to get into certain air vehicles which spawn right outside your hangar in order for the job to start. So eventually you will have to travel all the way to your hangar which doesn't seem helpful at all. Along with these, the terabyte also comes with its own client missions which pays ranging from 30 to 35 grand. Few of them require more than 2 people but rest can be done solo. It usually takes me just 2-3 to three minutes max to complete them and most of the time they are on double money. So it's easy $60,000 in just 3 minutes of work. The terabyte can be called from the interaction menu and it spawns fairly close to you. And when called through the interaction menu, it can take up to 34 RPGs whilst when you drive it out of the nightclub, it can only take up to 10 RPGs. You can actually test this out yourself. And it also comes with a drone station which you can use to shock NPCs or other players and even detonate them. But isn't of much use and I have used it just once till date. It also comes with a missile battery in the back which is good to have but pretty much useless most of the time. I personally didn't buy this upgrade, it's basically a waste. But this vehicle will be used mostly for making money and combining this with other vehicles like the Oppressor Mark II can help you a lot. It will be a drastic improvement for you in saving time by getting work done very fast compared to the normal old ways. So this is a must buy vehicle for 2019. Trust me, you won't ever regret the decision of buying this. This investment is for a lifetime. In my opinion, both the Terabyte and the Oppressor Mark II comes in the first place of the list as they both play a major role in making the online life easier. So these are all the vehicles everyone must own in 2019. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like, share it with your friends and also subscribe to the channel so as to stay tuned to more such awesome content that's going to follow. Thank you all and have a good day.